Hello, dear friends. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Happiness. This is the latest about Maze Namdekano. As our barrister, Aloy Ejimako, is to brief us what is going on. Please, let's hear him out. Thank you very much. Before the African Commission on Human and People's Rights, complaining about the Python dance and prescription of IPOB, and he won. The African Commission, which is a branch of the African Union, wrote a letter to the then president calling for implementation of certain things they asked him to do. One of them being that he should, he should henceforth or thenceforth cease and desist from further prosecutions or law enforcement actions against IPOB members and in particular, Mazem Nandekano. That decision was ignored. The United Nations intervened in 2020 and 2021 with similar decisions. Those two were also ignored. After his rendition, the United Nations intervened again in July 2021 and issued a celebrated opinion that he should be released unconditionally. That too was ignored. Now, a high court, a federal high court sitting in Omaha in October 2022 issued a decision condemning his detention, declaring it illegal and non-constitutional, his current detention in Abuja. That too was ignored. Back in January 2022, a high court of the state of Abia had awarded him one billion naira as compensation for the for the for the damages he suffered or that issued from that infamous Python dance. Payment of that compensation is outstanding. So also is the apology to him that the court had ordered. And then finally, last year, in October, a high court in Enugu State declared that the executive or administrative actions taken by the Southeast governors and the federal government back in 2017 to proscribe IPOB and declare it a terrorist organization, those actions were unconstitutional under Section 42 of the Constitution. This is important because Nigerians, all Nigerians, are supposed to be treated equally. What had happened to IPOB in 2017 in terms of the proscription was a stark evidence of discrimination, which is unconstitutional under Section 42 of the Constitution. We have been saying that until last year in October when the High Court agreed that that is so. We had figured that in an enlightened society such as ours, which is subject to rule of law, the federal government would have taken steps pursuant to that judgment of October last year to file some sort of application to withdraw the proscription of IPOB as it is and to cancel the terrorist toga that is placed on IPOB. Why? Because that very proscription in 2017, being expatriate, did not give opportunity to IPOB or any of its members to make representations as to why it should not be proscribed or as to why it should not be declared a terrorist organization. That offense, Section 36 of the Constitution, which required that any law that derogates from the right of any Nigerian, his right to fair hearing, should have given him an opportunity to make representations. So these are the several violations. And unfortunately, these violations have led to incalculable damage to citizens of this country, to innocent people, mostly in the South East and South South. Hundreds have been killed in pursuit or in law enforcement actions related to fighting IPOB. It's wrong to do all that on a mere expert order. Thousands are languishing in detention, and of course, you know, Namdekano himself is also languishing in detention following his rendition. So, too many bad things have happened, and we're hoping that we'll come full circle to a point where people will sit back 
government officials, the federal government, led by President Ahmed Tinubu, to look again at this case and to see whether this case has any merit at all, or whether the case was, as it were, political. motivated to the point that the present administration should not have any business inheriting it when someone says i do not want to be belong to a country anymore you don't lock him you don't pursue him with bullets and manacles and all kinds of things to put him in jail or to prosecute him you try to talk to him that i think is the more sensible thing to do than this law enforcement that is not going to be the solution to it. Thank you. My colleague now will say a few things and then we are going to conclude the press conference. Our fear is the way and manner we are being denied access to him. As lawyers, we are entitled to meeting with our client Marvin Namdekano, liaising with him, discussing and hearing from him what defenses he has against those charges. But each time we make effort towards seeing him, we are restrained by the DSS. I'm a victim. The allegations against Mazen Namdekano are personal allegations against him. He's the only person that can tell his lawyers what he did and what he did not do, and what line of defenses he could rely on. And that is why section 36 of section 6, paragraph G, paragraph C, says that as an accused person, he's entitled to a lawyer of his choice. Now, in an attempt to utilize that opportunity, we go to him to hear from him, get his line of defenses, because we are not there when these allegations were made. We are not there when he said to have committed these offenses. He's the only one that can tell us what defenses he has. But we are restrained. We are not allowed to lie with him. If we go with documents, for him to tell us his reactions to those documents, those documents are seized from us, they are scanned, they are photocopied, in the long run, we may not even get those documents back. Now, if we say, okay, please, Mazen Namkano, charge number so and so says this is what you did, what is your reaction to it? We are not even allowed to take those documents to him. Those documents are seized from us. And if we want to take notes, they say this is the limited number of pages you can write from what he's telling you. These things affect the facilities the Constitution says he's entitled to. That is the provision of Section 36, Subsection 6, Paragraph 3 of the Constitution. That is our fear. It's not that we can, we are not, we are disposed to accelerate the hearing. We will in the long, long run succeed. But where we are not allowed access to him, or even the little access we are allowed, we are not allowed to get information from him, get documents from him, get him signed documents for change of cancer. We are constrained to say that this is not how it is done elsewhere. And uh, we are two parties and contesting over a case in a, a court of law. And there is no equality. There is discrimination. Somebody has upper hand and is being allowed. I doubt if that prosecution or whatever we call it is the best as done in, a, in any other country. Wonderful. That is what we think is wrong. And if they allow us access as required by law, we will come here and celebrate with you when the man will be just tried, acquitted, and compensated. Thank you. Before the afternoon. All right, thank you very much, our lawyers. These are Biafrans defending Mazen Amdekano, defending the cause of Biafrans to have freedom. Hey, looking at Nigeria and their situation and their judiciary, everything about it, it looks practically impossible that Biafrans who leave Nigeria. And they're not doing this democratically, they are doing it by force. They kill, they maim, they deny, they lie, they do a lot, they fabricate against their friends. <laughs> I don't know how it will be moving forward. But then Mazinam the Kano is not giving it up. And their friends are not giving it up because because they are humans and they have right to life right to speeches, right to judiciary. You understand? All these things are inalienable rights. We have it. Yes, it doesn't matter 
how unruly Nigeria government can be. But then that's where we find ourselves and we must continue to press forward in order to have our freedom. Thank you very much, everyone. Please help us to share and also help us to subscribe. Thank you. God bless you all.